Hello everyone, welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. So in oral pathology so far we finished uh, important syndromes and important tumors. Now we are moving on to important cysts. So uh, we have uh, radicular cyst uh, or endogenic keratocyst and uh, denticular cyst. And these three are the most important uh, ones uh, for university exam. So let's uh, get into the details of radicular cyst. So cyst is a pathological fluid filled cavity lined by an epithelium. So cyst is always a well circumscribed lesion which has a clear boundaries that is a epithelial lining will be there so it has three components basically lumen wall and epithelial lining this is the lumen innermost which is innermost cavity which is having a fluid and immediate to that lumen there will be lining and the outermost covering is capsule it's also known as wall so these are the three components of cyst now we are moving on to the classification. We have basically two types. One is odontogenic and non-odontogenic. From the name itself, we get the idea. This is tooth related. This is not tooth related. Tissues are the origin, cause of origin. So odontogenic, we have again two types, developmental and inflammatory. Okay, Inflammatory is the cause of inflammation is uh, resulting in cyst. And developmental is default developmental and problems or developmental uh, process uh, resulting in a cyst formation. So in developmental cyst, we have odontogenic keratocyst, dentigerous or follicular cyst, eruption cyst, lateral periodontal cyst, gingival cyst of infants. These are the developmental cysts in oral cavity. In inflammatory cysts, the most common one is radicular cyst, which is having three types, apical, lateral and residual. And another inflammatory cyst is paradental cyst. In non odontogenic we have nasopalatine duct cyst and nasolabial cyst. It's not particularly tooth related. So radicular cyst is, uh, is odontogenic cyst which is derived from cell rest of molasses which proliferates in response to inflammation. So radicular cyst is seen at the root tip so when caries occurs, it is not treated, it goes to the tip of root and it causes inflammation and it is becoming a cyst. That is the idea of radicular cyst. So it is in response to inflammation. So which is also known as apical periodontal cyst, periapical cyst or root end cyst. So we have three basic types of radicular cyst apical lateral and residual apical and lateral is based on the relative position of cyst with respect to the root this is at the tip which is circumscribing the tip exactly lateral cyst is not circumscribing the tip or apical foramen which is uh, more of a lateral side of a root residual cyst actually there is no tooth which is uh, originating from a residues of or uh, remnants of a tooth and the most common location of radicular cyst is maxillary anterior region then maxillary posterior then mandibular posterior and mandibular anterior most common is maxillary anterior and least common is mandibular anterior so that is a uh, radicular cyst basic uh, cyst classification and uh, location about uh, radicular cyst so moving on to the epidemiology of radicular cyst, it is uh, one of the most common cyst of jaw that is 60 to 70 percentage of cyst are radicular or periapical cyst and it is most commonly seen between 20 to 60 years and it is very rare less than 10 years. Maxilla is more affected as, because uh, Porosity of maxillary bone is more favorable for cystic formation 
compared to the mandibular one, 3 is to 1 ratio, that is 3 times more lesions are found in maxilla and it is a male predilection cyst with 3 is to 2 ratio compared to the females. In clinical features, it is asymptomatic and slowly progressive but if infection enters, the swelling becomes painful and rapidly expanding. Otherwise, it is asymptomatic and a slowly progressive one. The initial swelling is round and hard, but later what happens is the part of wall is resorbed, leaving a soft, fluctuant swelling and bluish in color. So initial it is very round and a hard structure but as the lesion expands the part of wall is resorbed leaving a soft flexion swelling. So when bone has been reduced to eggshell cracking, a, a crackling sensation may be felt on pressure. So it will be reduced to eggshell cracking there will be a crackling sensation when applying pressure. So this is a uh, important uh, sequence of events how the radicular or periapical cyst is formed. So it starts with the cause that is either caries, trauma, pulpal necrosis or periodontal disease and it leads to periapical inflammation. So once the inflammation starts it slowly develops and becoming periapical granuloma. That is granulation tissue, scar or inflammatory cells will be there which provide rich vascular area to rest of molasses and rest of molasses proliferate which is forming a large mass of cell. Then what happens? Then the inner cells of this mass deprived of nourishment. So, the inner cell will be deprived of nourishment which undergo liquefaction necrosis, formation of a cavity in the center of granuloma and ultimately a result with a proper epithelial lined cavity which is radicular or periapical cyst. Cyst wall separates from bone due to the pulpal irritation. So how it starts? It starts with caries, trauma, necrosis or periodontal disease that is a cause, inflammation, periapical granuloma, then cell rest of molasses, it proliferates, it becoming a large mass, then inner mass deprived of nourishment, it undergo liquefaction necrosis and formation of a cavity. So that is a pathogenesis of radicular cyst. So how do we diagnose radicular cyst? We can use a combination of radiographs and vitality test. We can do a vitality test mostly. It will be a non-vital tooth and radiographic appearance is a most conclusive evidence. We will easily understand uh, a periapical cyst from a radiograph. So in clinical findings, the signs and symptoms. The smaller cyst uh, do not usually become acutely infected but the larger cyst there will be expansion of bone, displacement of uh, tooth root and crepitus on palpation of alveolar bone and negative responses will be there on pulp testing and the regional lymph nodes will be affected. Moving on to the radiographic features, it is uh, most commonly identical to periapical granuloma. There will be a radio opaque line around the periphery of radiolucent area. So this cyst will be a radiolucent uh, area but that will be uh, covered or surrounded by a radio opaque line. So mostly it will be a ovoid or round radiolucency with a radio opaque line at the borders. Mostly it will be less than 1.5 cm diameter and it will be a well circumscribed lesion. So the differential diagnosis can be periapical granuloma or endogenic tumors and giant cell lesions. So treatment options are most commonly we should do root canal filling. Then extraction is also uh, needed in few cases. Extraction of uh, non-vital tooth and curettage of the apical zone if it is very much infected. 
root canal filling with uh, episectomy and if it is not properly done there is chance for residual cyst so uh, severe condition we need to go for enucleation or marsupialization so that's all about radicular cyst it is the most uh, common cyst one of the common cyst uh, and cyst and tumors are different so it is the first cyst in our uh, segment the next one is dentigerous cyst and uh, odontogenic uh, keratocyst also coming up so i'll come up with uh, dentigerous cyst in my next session thank you